Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about MTG finance writer for Star City Games, Chaz. Now his writing is of course behind a paywall, but uh, he is one of the more famous MTG finance people. And his opinions on PewDiePie and the overall economics. Now first of all, I will say that when you hold a political opinion... Uh, you can always say, hey, this is not the company's political opinion, this is mine, but you are always tied to a company. Uh, to a lesser extent, this is true for every single business. But when you are a card game and your main purpose is sell card cards to the consumer, Michael Jordan said it best. Even Republicans buy sneakers or something like Republicans also buy sneakers. And he was the ultimate businessman. Hanes, obviously Jordans are still the number one sneaker brand globally. So back to the business aspect. I think politics and the whole PewDiePie really showed you who these people actually are and what their goals and objectives are. So many times we can be a little bit confused because it's not as blatant as it is with PewDiePie. People make mistakes. People make mistakes. Do we forgive them? In the legal system, the answer is yes. People are forgiven, and then that's why they're let out of jail. They don't stay in jail forever because hopefully jail has changed who they are. It has been a life experience for them, and now they are reformed as a different um, individual now. A better individual for society. The same we can say about cheating. Why are cheaters not automatically banned for life? Well, it's because we assume that, like Alex, if we give him a small ban, and then maybe a little larger ban, that he will reform. And it seemed that way. It seemed via Alex having a very heartfelt Facebook post, admitting that he was wrong, and pretty much doubling down on the fact that he didn't cheat that much, although we all know that's not true. The same with Marcelio and all these other people we give them, and some of them are still playing. Some of them, if Wizard of the Coast had their way, would actually be voted into the Hall of Fame. We give people a second chance. But when those people have a political view that is different from ours, we don't even give them a first chance. So PewDiePie paying, playing Magic is relatively new for me, at least, and for a lot of people. And the comments that you see on this issue is quite um, interesting because no one's giving him a chance. PewDiePie, we should invite PewDiePie, or even if he didn't have 85 million subscribers, which we'll talk about later, we should invite him into Magic because we are, according to these individuals on the left, the most inclusive community. So we are so inclusive and we accept mistakes as been shown by Alec Bracini, which we have accepted his mistakes many times and we've forgiven him. Uh, and if we accept this philosophy that, hey, if you're Saito, Saito is a serial cheater and the cheat that I remember him the most, he's also a Hall of Fame player now. He's also one of the most famous Magic players ever. Same with Dave Williams. The cheat that I remember Saito best is the old, oh, I'm going to shuffle my deck, and then I'm going to hand my deck to my opponent. My opponent is going to look at me kind of strange, but I'm telling him to cut. He cuts the deck. Boom. Judge call. My opponent manipulated my deck, Saito would say, and then he would win, and then off he goes to the top eight, and GP victory after GP victory, because he would get them on a technicality. Since, what is he doing? I don't know. The opponent doesn't know it. And then now the opponent's been banned. And the opponent is a cheater now. The old, old uh, reverse, oh, you cheated technique. Not bad, Saito. Not bad. But now he's one of the most beloved Magic the Gathering players, especially uh, in Japan. So people can change. People can grow, grow up. People can get better. So I don't understand why these people with mistakes after mistakes, um, Channel Fireball, Star City Games, they've hired people who I would say are ethically gray 
and have cheated on significant others with babies. And this is not me making this up. This is a hard fact. And no matter what you say about you know, cheating, and that's all about magic. So you're not impacting someone's life that much. I mean, yes, you could take away their uh, Pro Tour win, or you could take away their GP win, and theoretically they would go broke, and that would be bad and quite awful for most magic players. But at least there's not babies involved. There are babies involved in Channel Fireball's drama and the Star City Games drama. So back to PewDiePie. If we hold ourselves as a we accept everybody, then we have to accept PewDiePie, right? Did he cheat? No. Do we know if he's a net negative? I would argue no way he's going to be a net negative to our game. And the danger, um, the danger a lot of these people are... Um, getting themselves into is they're going down this slope and they don't see that they're actually on the other side of the slope. Like if you use these logic, if you use this same logic, then the, this logic can be applied to you as well. Chaz is not perfect. He's not. None of the people in MTG finance are perfect. And the longer you make content, the more imperfect you become because of course you're going to make a mistake. I mean, it's pretty obvious. Um, the whole Emma, Emma thing with the magic for bad, I don't, you know, that was a mistake somebody made and then everyone got banned for it. You, whether or not they were involved, they got associated with it. So even if your picture perfect clean, your association, some type of group that you're in, you're going to get called out. And that's what I believe happened to Travis Wu. So back to uh, this conversation, um, people are not giving PewDiePie a chance. They've already actively uh, decided that to hate him. And hate doesn't beat hate, right? Love beats hate. Acceptance and understanding. And that's what magic was back in the day. It was, hey, you play magic, I play magic. We might not get along very well, but at least we can play a game of magic and have fun. And there's very few games that are like that. Um, obviously, Call of Duty is not like that. I used to play Call of Duty with my uh, coworkers, and we would all camp out. And you could uh, imagine the little kids screaming in the background that we were camping and stuff. <laughs> we we did that just to we did it a because we were new players, and that's what we, that's how I thought we we should have played the game. <laughs> but you know, most online gaming communities, League of Legends. Uh, there are memes, there are trolls, there's awards for the best troll, uh, like Tyler won, and there's awards for like trash talk, and people enjoy that. I don't know why we can't have that in Magic, or we not mature enough for trash talk. People do that all the time on sports. I mean, part of the interesting part about being a Philadelphia Eagle fan is I live close to Dallas now. And obviously, everyone in Houston is a Dallas Cowboy fan, although we have our own team, which is really weird, but whatever. Everyone in the whole state of Texas is a Dallas Cowboy fan. And, you know, I go to the bars, I go with my neighbors and my friends, and it's great. We trash talk all the time. You know, Philly has the most recent championship, but uh, during the era when I grew up with the Don McNabs and the T.O.s, that wasn't, that was like, we were close. A lot, heartbreak after heartbreak. Um, Andy Reid, I'd still want him to win a Super Bowl. Good luck, Andy. Um, I would be very proud of him if he won a Super Bowl. But the part of being a sports fan is you trash talk. And it's all in good fun. You make some jokes. And people are not recording your joke to post online, to put on Twitter, to put you on blast. And now they took away your Pro Tour invite. And now you've been banned for life. Like, what is that? <laughs> you know, like We trash talk all the time. And the same with Magic. When my close friends were drinking, um, we'll drink some beer, some local beer. We have the St. Arnold's Brewery right next to where we live or right next to my friend's workplace. So he'll get these uh, craft, quote, craft, end quote, beers. And we'll drink, we'll get drunk, we'll have fun. And then we're like, some people will puke even, which then, no, that's not great if it's my home. Uh, but... We're just bros, and we're just hanging out and having fun, and now that's, like, banned. This is looked down upon as if, like, we were all, like, being sexist or racist. We're not doing that. It's just we're bros having fun. 
Um, I was the head of my fraternity in law school. I went to a pretty good law school, William & Mary. So it wasn't like, I mean, it was a pretty prestigious position to have. It was a legal fraternity with women and men. And we were all bros or, you know, we were all part fraternity brothers and sisters. And we all get drunk all the time with kegs of beer. And half the time, we don't even know what's going on in class the next day. That's the whole point of frat fraternity, right? Like, that's why I joined one. What's because of the, like, yeah, parties. And we'd party by the, um, I don't know if it was a lake or a creek, but some type of water. It might have even been a man-made, like, lake or something, <laughs> now that I think about it. Because I've actually never gone to the end of it. So it's probably a man-made, uh, man-made lake. That one of our college professors, he was like, the head magistrate, he was like the professor in charge of the fraternity. And it was just fun. Um, but people don't get offended. People don't get like, you're just having fun. And I don't know why people are so easily offended. Uh, you've never met PewDiePie. You, you've never talked to him. You don't know who he actually is because his YouTube persona, personality could be very different. Um, one example I have of this is the mana source. He portrays himself as something and he is definitely not that something and even to Laren community college i mean he portrays himself as a professor but it is a debatable if he actually was a professor and b he's not been a professor for a long time but that's still his persona um he's been more of a e-begger than he has been he's been longer he's been longer doing e-begging than he has been teaching so you're still a professor? Like, I, I don't know, titles. I think titles matter. And there's a lot of different personalities in our community that I look at and I say, oh, gross. Or, uh, I don't even think you play magic, dude. <laughs> like, <laughs> my favorite story is the Manosaurus got elected to the community cup and he couldn't win a single game of magic against the lowliest, lowliest magic players, which the coach could trot out. Remember, at these community events, the community is supposed to win, so everyone gets free magic online cards. So you're not supposed to beat the community members because that would be bad for the said community, which is your actual people buying the cards. So they're told not to win, yet the dude can't win one game out of, I think, 15 or 14 games, I remember. But back to PewDiePie, if we are so inclusive and we are so multicultural and diverse, why can't we accept PewDiePie? He made a mistake. People make mistakes. You've made a mistake. I've made a mistake. LSV has made a mistake. Tons of people in our community have made mistakes. Um, and these mistakes sometimes range from being predators. Well, that's not really a mistake. I get, mm, questionable. I would say it's not a mistake, but I could see how some people would say, oh, someone learned their lesson, blah, blah, blah. But I also think there's a reason that they have to put be put on registries for life. So PewDiePie is not a bad guy. He's just a bro. And has he said things that he would want to come take back? Yeah. He's been on YouTube forever. He's the biggest YouTuber. Everything that he says is going to be criticized. Every little, every stream, every live stream, every video he makes, uh, any joke, any deck title list, he's going to be heavily criticized just because he is popular and he's the biggest. But why would we want, I mean, it's kind of like, let the person without sin throw the first stone. And there's a lot of sin in Magic Gathering community. There's a lot of people who, um, if you want to read Emma's uh, Pojo article, it's not kind. It's not friendly. It's the exact opposite of someone who would be productive in our community. Now, see, it's changed. Um, see, it's changed and now is semi-productive, I assume. I'm not positive. I don't follow her. But I'm sure she's not as toxic as that article would make her to be the same with uh, MTG Mayfer. We can say that MTG Mayfer changed, and maybe she doesn't feel the same ways that she did before. And I would actually say, I would rather have her to say, "Blank you, 
internet trolls, I'm going to the Mythic Invitation. I think that would be interesting. Talking about Mythic Invitations, the first non-male has won. So I haven't, I'm, I'm pronouncing that correct, non-male has won the Mythic Invitation. Congrats. I, I think it's also the first trans individual who has won a Magic Tournament. Congrats. Like, why would that be bad for me or the community? That's great. I accept that. That's awesome. But I also want to accept PewDiePie. Right? So if you are going to accept all opinions and all diversity and you want to be as diverse as possible and multicultural and all this great stuff, then how can you exclude PewDiePie? Um, we all make mistakes. The longer you make content, the more likely you're, you are in, to make mistakes. Um, I was reading an article about the Andrew Yanyuk, who's the number one Hearthstone player. And he's made mistakes. He's owned up to them. And now he's back to Mad MTG Arena. Everything is forgiven. Not that I'm saying PewDiePie is very interesting as a figure because he is the, well, T-Series, I don't know. It's always back and forth. It's hard to tell. But he was or is the biggest YouTuber, and he is a gamer, and he does like magic. Back in the day, those were our only two things you needed to do. Like magic and be a gamer. That's it. You could sit down anywhere. Now, when I was smaller, when I was in middle school, high school, even college, elementary school, preschool, you could sit down. You had these magic cards. You didn't actually know how to play the game in like elementary school. But you could trade with anyone. You could play against anyone. I remember the uh, first day of middle school in sixth grade, there was another group playing Magic, uh, Matt, Danny, and I had my group who al already played Magic, uh, Jason, Ravi, Brian, and others. I'm, I'm forgetting a few names. Ryan, oh, Ryan was on the other side. And our middle school was a combination of two elementary schools, two or three elementary schools. And we didn't know who they were, but we played against them. We played Emperor against them. And so all everyone in my middle school, our elementary school was on one side and everyone on the other side. I remember it was uneven, but we still beat them. <laughs> no one knew what was going on. I mean, it was terrible. I, I'm trying to remember these old games. I wish I had recorded it so I could show you how, you know, everyone's got penny sleeves. And man, it was just, uh, it was a bloodbath. I think we had dual land drop sleeves back in the day. All right. Um. Please subscribe to my other channel so I can get my sweet, sweet vengeance on everyone who has spited me in the Houston social media community. I promise that I will record the speech I will give in front of them because they've already they've invited me in the past for their second anniversary. And I'm sure that they're uh, willing to invite me again to be a guest speaker, which is kind of ironic, right? That they would ask me to be a guest speaker when they don't even put me in the top 100 list. But, hi guys.